Hey, it's Scott Petrak with another episode of the Brown Zone Zone Coverage Podcast. Some news came out of the league meetings this week in Orlando, and much of the discussion has been about the future of the stadium. The Browns also brought back kicker Cade York. Here to discuss, as always, is Dave Chodowski of Go, the WKYC Morning News. What's going on, Chud? Hey, Scott, I think we said at the very end last week that uh, we might have to jump on this week because we, we mentioned the stadium talk might mm. get brewing and get going, and sure enough, it did, along with some other stuff. So uh looks like we got option A and we have option B, huh? <laughs> yeah, I think we should go option A. <laughs> so, I mean, it's to me, it's about the stadium, right? And I was texting some guys today, some of my buddies, um, and I know we've touched on it a little bit, but the Haslam said it was two down to two things. It's either renovate the stadium on the current site, on the lakefront, for about a billion, it might even be more than that, a billion dollars with a B, or build a stadium, a dome stadium, outside of the city. They didn't narrow it down to Brook Park, but they have the option to buy, I think it's 176 acres of land in Brook Park, over there by Snow Road, or on Snow Road by the airport. Um, so it's either renovate downtown or build a new dome stadium, which is probably at least twice as much money to build a, the dome stadium, but it's a dome, it's new, um, they could do, you know, entertainment around it, right? Hotels, restaurants, parking around it. Um, so those are the two options, Chud. So I guess first I want to ask you, like, what do you think is a better option? Well, before I answer that, where does yeah. the money come from? Right. Well, here's, and it's, this is going to be way too simplified, but I think we can work under the premise of, regardless of if it's renovation or new, the Haslam's pay for half, and then the other half is tax money. And it's a combination of whatever city they're in, or municipality, county, and state, right? So if it's at the state, if it's on the lakefront, let's say the Haslam's put in $500 million, and then it's Cleveland, Cuyahoga County, and the state, figure out the other $500 million. And at Brook Park, it would be twice all those numbers. Um, you know, I, I think it's probably, I'm sure it's way more complicated than that. But I think that's a safe way uh, for us to have this discussion. All right. So my answer would probably be this. I would go with option C, which <laughs> would be a dome would be a dome downtown, right? But yeah. since that's not on the table, I think I'm leaning B. And yeah. I, I I don't and I think I mentioned this when we talked about this before. In my in my younger years, I would have said, no, I want the cold weather to be a factor. I want the stadium downtown because you know it's better for the city it's cleveland you know growing up we had the coliseum out in richfield and i just yeah. thought it was so much I, I enjoyed it out in richfield i didn't hate it it was a longer drive but i still went to Cavs games right i mean if sure. you're a Cavs fan you did it but I, I thought it was much better when they moved downtown so i do kind of hate leaving downtown but with what it would do for the image of Cleveland and, and the city and what it would bring in, I mean, we're talking potential Super Bowl, right? We're talking potential Final Four, so many more concerts, plus all the stuff that would be built around it. I just think that that would be incredible for that area. And I, I just don't feel like, I don't know, I, I just don't feel like the weather is such an advantage for the Browns anymore. Like, I felt like in the 80s it was, right? When yeah. when those teams came in and Kozar and in those days, I mean, it felt like the cold weather, to me anyway, was such a big difference. I, I just don't feel like it is anymore. I, I don't have the answer as to why. Maybe just because they haven't been really good since they've been back in 99. But I, I think that even the way this team is built, I, I, I think that maybe they could succeed better inside a dome. And, you know, I know there's the turf grass element, which right. I really won't get into. But I, I guess, um, you know, I'm not saying I'm, like, married to this answer. But I think I go option B, and I I, I want the uh, the dome answer. What about you? Yeah, I, I, it's so difficult, Chud. And for me, I'm with you on the outdoor indoor thing that that used to seem like a big deal. Now you know you're paying a ton of money to go to watch these games. I'm not right. I'm in the press box, but people pay a ton of money to go to these games. You know, if you're forking down, you know, whatever. I mean, a day to a day at the game could be easily a thousand dollars, right? Tickets and parking and beer and all that. So 
If you're spending that, and, and I don't think that's a, I mean, I've seen what the season ticket costs, so I don't think that's a crazy number to say. So if you're spending a thousand dollars, it could for you, right? You're taking three kids or your wife and two kids, whatever, three buddies, before you go into the game, it's going to cost a thousand dollars. Um, do you want to sit out in 20 degrees and in, in hail or freezing rain? No. So from that perspective, I think you're better off in the dome. I, I do think there's some, you know, like there's a, a tiny part of me that says, yes, the tradition and it's Cleveland and it's outside. Um, but that doesn't really matter in Detroit where they have a dome. It doesn't matter in Indianapolis where they have a dome. Uh, you know, Buffalo is still outside. Um, you know, so I, I get that argument, but I don't think that's a big deal. That's to me, that's not a deciding factor. I, I think grass is a bigger factor when you have so many players talk about the player safety issue and grass is better than turf. And it feels like it's going to be hard to roll in natural grass in this climate inside the dome. Now, maybe they will, and maybe they'll figure it out. And maybe that is a non, you know, it doesn't matter. It doesn't have to be a discussion point. But I do think grass for, is on this, it's on this list of pros and cons for me somewhere. And it's higher than um, just the traditional playing outside. But my main, I keep coming back to the money. And a billion dollars is a billion dollars. And that's a ton of money, right? So let's call it 2.4 to build a dome in Brook Park. Like that's obviously more than twice as much money. Um, where does that come from? You know, and we, I talked about the taxes and the Haslam's, but you know, there's a lot of issues in Northeast Ohio, right? That money could be spent other places. And if it's just okay, you're going to have to spend a billion dollars. Period. Well, then the extra billion or billion four or billion whatever it winds up being to have a dome, can't you do some good with that? You know, and I know half it would be the Haslam's and. Like I get the com complexities of this, but that's a lot of taxpayer money being spent on a facility that's half owned by a family, right? That that family's probably going to get a lot of the benefits of owning that stadium or being partial owners of that stadium and the money that's brought in around it from if that's hotels or parking, whatever. Um so, like, you would, I would have to see a better breakdown because that money, those, I have sticker shock thinking about the numbers and the difference. I do like the fact that it's on the lake, I, the the tradition of that, the the fact that it would be in the city still, I think is important. Um, so for me, the dome, I, I guess my default is renovate the stadium, keep it where it's been. Um, it'll be gorgeous. You spend a billion dollars. Jimmy Haslam said you wouldn't even be able to recognize it. So it, you could, it could feel like a new stadium. For the Dome to swing it, right, for the Dome to convince me, it would have to be – you'd have to guarantee me that there would be a ton of events that would be able to be held at this thing and that, they, that the town would get Final Fours and that there would be at least one Super Bowl and the Big Ten Championship would come. And all these events that would come here instead of going to Detroit or instead of going to Indianapolis – or in Minnesota, right? All these cold weather cities that have domes, they don't get Final Fours every time, all the time, right? They're not getting big events all the time. So, you know, and I do believe in David Gilbert and, you know, the Sports Commission. I think they do a great job. But you would have to sell me on the fact that this would be a boon for the economy and a boon for the region, and I'm skeptical about that. Yeah, you make some great points there. I, I can't argue. And and I think you're right. I, I mean, we're actually, we're reacting to something that we haven't had a ton of time to really think about. And I think you're right. I think you'd have to break down the numbers. Like, I, I guess I'd have to see how much each taxpayer or, yeah. and maybe, maybe, Scott, this might be a dumb question. So if, it, if it's in Brook Park, are, is it going to be everyone in Cuyahoga County or is it just going to be people that live in that yeah. city alone like how does that break down no that's a great question I, I i think the the chunk of it outside the city would come from Cuyahoga county tax and state tax or state budgets at least right it would come out of their budgets but but i do think from a brook park's perspective I, I think what happens is that city or that municipality takes out long-term loans and say and says we're going to generate so much tax money that that's how we're going to be able to finance whatever chunk of the dome that Brook Park would have to pay for. And then they would recoup those taxes through, you know, I don't know if it would be a, 
like a sales tax hike in Brook Park, which feels probably more likely to me is you tax the crap out of the hotels that you wind up building around the stadium, right? You crap the ta you tax the crap out of the parking lots that you build around the stadium, right? And there's probably have to be negotiations there. Does the city get those taxes? Um, I'm sure the city would get the taxes, but do the Haslam's control the parking around there? Do they control the land around there? Like those are the deep level discussions. But I, I think that's how Brook Park would have to plan to get the money back is by hefty taxes on dome specific events. And that would be, like I said, hotel, entertainment, parking. Yeah. And and there's no doubt. And I know, like, I mean, listen, I'm, we're all in the same boat, right? I mean, my mortgage is way different right now than it was even a couple of years ago because of taxes and different things that have happened. So I, I, I get everyone's going to have a different opinion, too, on how it affects them individually. And you're right. I mean, I, I could see it going both ways on, on the lakefront. You could have a beautiful new building and you keep it downtown. Or, uh, I mean, so I'm, I'm guessing, and again, I... How much information is out there, Scott? I know what I saw. I haven't dug deep, though. Like, would they knock down the old stadium? Like, yeah. what would happen to that area? Yeah. Well, the Haslam's hope is that if it doesn't happen at the stadium, at the current site, right? And they kept saying that either one's a possibility. Um, they haven't decided. They're open to both. But they did say that if they moved out of the city, that the lakefront property would have to be, or their goal, would be for that to be part of a bigger lakefront development, right? And that's why this is more, you know, I keep using complicated, but um, that's why this whole discussion is even more complicated because the renovation would be part of a downtown or a downtown redevelopment, right? Better use of the lakefront, the land bridge, all the things we've been hearing about forever in the Cleveland has been so bad about, right? That we just don't use the lakefront well enough. Um, and this stadium sits on a prime piece of real estate that if it wasn't there anymore, that it would have to be part of a development. And whether that's shopping or restaurants or, you know, residential, um, D and Jimmy's has some hopes is that that piece of land would become part of that. So, you know, I don't think they'd give up on the city if they moved. You know, I, I think they would still be involved with that. They talk about, um, you know, how they want so much for the city of Cleveland. And I believe them when they say that. Um, and that is a really valuable piece of property. Um, so it would have to be part of this development. And, but you would hope that just because the Browns moved, that all of a sudden any momentum that's built to fix up the lakefront and take better advantage of it doesn't fall apart because, you know, the Haslam's aren't still there. Yeah, there's so many cities that utilize their lakefront so much better than we do. And that's right. something we, you know, we, we all know that needs to happen. So if they did go to Brook Park and you had a dome, you'd have that brand new area and then you'd have a revitalized lakefront that'd be pretty cool you'd have two two things that would be just make your city better now on the flip side scott i can't argue or think people are wrong to say you know there are people out there that you know tailgating and the pregame and the post game is just as much big of a deal as the game itself yeah and and or to a lesser degree, just below it. I mean, let's be honest. I mean, we know how big of a deal that is to, to these fans. Yeah, I mean, I mean, how many memories do you have of walking over the bridges, right? Or making that walk when it was, you know, when the Guardians played there back in the day, right, on, on the lakefront. Um, yeah, obviously, then we're called the Indians. Well, making that walk down West Third, all those walks you made, and it would just be different. And, you know, if you're – 15, you probably don't care, you're 10 or whatever. Um, but if you're our age, or, you know, I'm a little older than you, but not much, um, it would be different. It'd be going to a place and it'd be, you know, parking your car and tailgating the car and then walking to the stadium because you're in a giant parking lot right around the new stadium, right? And that's kind of how it is in Kansas City. Kansas City, you drive to this place. I think it's still in, this, in Kansas City proper, but it's away from downtown. And there's a million cars and it's, the baseball stadium and the football stadium, million cars, giant parking lot, smells like barbecue, it smells great, um, but it's just a different experience, right? What happens in the uni lot? Do people still go to the uni lot? Maybe for a while, but then that would have to fade away. Um, so it, it's tough. I mean, it's tough. It's really different, and it's especially different if, you know, you grew up only knowing 
um, the Browns on the lakefront. Yeah, no question. Uh, excellent points there. I guess the bottom line is, though, something's going to happen, right? I mean, is, is it 2028? Is that when when it's up? Yeah, that's when the lease is up. Now, I, I hasn't said that they could extend it if they needed to. And I think you'd extend it if you're building a dome and it's taking too long to build the dome, right? Um, yeah, yeah. But, you know, it feels like it has to – the decision has to be made by the end of this year. That That's the momentum I sense is – they want to have a decision made and probably funding in place to get started on whatever, because the renovation is going to take years. They think they can play while they're doing it. Um, you know, I mean, play in the fall and still renovate in the off seasons. Um, you know, and obviously a dome would take years to build. So, you know, yeah, I, I think the goal is to have that decided by the end of this year, if possible. What are you reading from emails, fan feedback, social media? What What's been, it, which which direction have you been sensing it going as far as uh, fans feel? Yeah, I mean, this is a very unscientific, but uh, it feels like the dome to me. And I don't know if that's be if there's influences there, right? Like, um, you know, I, maybe people on social media are pushing that or, um, but that's the sense I get. And just, you know, an unofficial, like, text, I'm on this thread with, and guys or whatever. And, you know, everybody almost, it was almost unanimous for a dome. So um, obviously that doesn't speak for everybody. And, you know, I don't think any of those people actually live in the city of Cleveland. So that probably, <laughs> right. So, you know, I mean, they live in, you know, Avon Lake or Rocky River, right. So I, that probably affects how you think about it. Um, yeah. You know, I, I'm sure it does. Right. Especially you're not even in the County. It, it affects you more. Um, I don't think any of the people on the east side whose job, whose drive would get longer, right? If it was in Brook Park, not a ton longer, but it would get longer, you know, if you're coming from Euclid or Lyndhurst or Chardon or Menor, right? So um, I, I think it probably leans dome. I don't know how heavily it leans, it leans dome. Yeah. You know, if, if you live in the city of Cleveland, do you think that, um, you know, do you think that spending that much money is wise? Or do you think that, the fact that it's no longer in your city that you lose out on the revenue from people going downtown, right? Like all those things are probably above my head. Um, I, I would need to study more of the, you know, that, that high level economics. So um, I, I do think all that matters into how people view it. Anything else on the stadium before we move on? No, I'm good there. All right. Another thing we talked about last week and we do not have an answer, but we need, are thinking it's getting close, but we still don't know about that game in Brazil, correct? Yeah. Do we know that we do know it's down to the Browns and Packers. Is that right though? Yeah, Browns and Packers. Um that's always been since the Combine, that's what I was hearing at the Combine. Um and then the Packers president said it at the owners meeting. So yeah, it's Cleveland or Green Bay. Roger Goodell said the team does matter. Um you know it's one of the factors. I think you know I I've read somewhere that Green Bay has a big backing in Brazil. Um, Green Bay is pretty popular everywhere, I think. Now, the Browns are too, right? The Browns, are, we know the, the Browns backers are everywhere. Um, so I don't know how it's going to play out. I, you know, for a while, I thought it was the Browns, now I'm kind of leaning Green Bay. But, you know, I think we'll probably know. I, I, it sounds like it's not coming Friday. You know, we're taping this Thursday afternoon. Um, it sounds like it's going to wait till next week, but I would think early next week. So that was my next question to you. Do, you. do you have a gut feel or it sounds like you're going Green Bay? Yeah, I'm going to go Green Bay, but maybe part of that's because it would be easier. You know, a little, I'm trying to wish it into existence because I probably would not go to Brazil. I'd have to, I'd have to convince the company to, to go to Brazil. You know, you know, it's just all of it, right? Passport, visa, you know, time change. I mean, it's a long flight, all that, all that. Um, or if I, even if I don't go, then the team leaves for five days and it's right before the season and you'd like to have them around and it's week one. You'd like to be there, all those things. So um, maybe that's a little wishful thinking on me, vote, me uh, leaning toward green Bay. Once again, it's about perspective. Touch right, back to right. perspective. <laughs> exactly right, buddy. <laughs> <laughs> yeah. Yeah. I, I just have this feeling I was thinking about it the other day and I just feel like, you know, NFC showdown between the Eagles and Packers and uh, just 
the Packers seem to get more national spotlight than the Browns do, and obviously that's they've won a lot more than, than we have here since we've come back. Well, Sky, as far as the owners meeting goes, I don't know if there's anything else you want to hit, but one thing I found interesting and not surprised at all, the NFL is just taking over Christmas. I mean, a Wednesday – Wednesday is Christmas this year, and they found a way to have Christmas games. I mean, it's no longer the day of the NBA. The NFL has taken over. Yeah, they really have. And, you know, I think it started a couple years ago where NFL said, we're just going to go head-to-head with the NBA one big time. Um, And then they just can't – and I I, I mean, I understand it, but the money is just too great. And, And the NFL looks at it as a chance to make a ton of money and sell these standalone games for big bucks to whoever's the highest bidder. Um, yeah, Cause it feels like they're separate than just the, the regular broadcast deals, right? With CBS and NBC and ESPN. It feels like these standalone games command extra money from whomever. And, you know, they're going to have two games. And if you, and they've always said that they weren't going to rearrange the schedule. Like if it's Wednesday, they weren't going to play out of Christmas on Wednesday. Well, they changed their mind because it's just too much money to pass up. So if you play on Wednesday, because the schedule is all, I mean, it's wonky, right? Nobody ever plays on a Wednesday. So now the way they're going to do it is the teams that play on Wednesday have to play on Saturday. So they'll have a short week before, and then they'll have a real short week from Saturday to Wednesday, like a normal Sunday to Thursday game. Um, It's just really hard, especially that late in the season. But the money's too great. The NFL says we're going to do it. So if if they were going to play Wednesday, that means – no matter when Christmas is, they're going to play on Christmas. Yeah. But on the back end, though, you'll have a nice break after you get done on Wednesday. You won't play again until the following Sunday. So Theoretically. Be... <laughs> yeah. <laughs> well, right. yeah, right. Yeah. Um, but so what's going to happen then? So if there's two games, then you have to, it's going to be the same four teams playing on Saturday. So with the two teams that play each other on Saturday and then – you know what I mean? It'd yeah. be the same four, four well, I teams, think it's, right? I think it's actually six teams on Saturday. There's three games on Saturday. So then that gives uh, you more, that gives you you know more uh scenarios to to match those other two games. But gotcha. All right. But it's probably I mean it it feels like it makes sense to have division games, right? Because then let's say you play the AFC North, they all play on Saturday, then you can all play them on Wednesday and just flip the opponent and it's not the competitive balance isn't that big a deal because you're all in the same division. You're playing division opponents. The preparation doesn't have to be as great. So I would not be shocked at all if you saw um, if you saw a division. I'm not saying it'll be the North, but you saw one division play both those games. Yeah, uh, I know exactly. I just feel like the NFC East would be the first yep. division that they would throw out there. Always, <laughs> right? I thought the same thing, Chad. I thought that I said, okay, well, the AFC North is a good, divi- real good division. And it's got some attraction to it. And then immediately I thought, well, NFC East always trumps it. Yeah. Yeah, no doubt. Uh, all right. Some uh, other Browns news. Uh, not a surprise. The old kicker is back. York is back. I, I don't know. I think it kind of is a surprise, buddy. Um, do you? I I'm do. Not. Like, okay. I like. I got the text. I was in a fantasy baseball draft. I got a text said, I'm like, what the? Um, yeah, it, and I, I get it. Like, and you're probably going to say the same thing. I, why you don't think it's a surprise? The Browns don't give up on their draft picks. They took him really high. If you have a chance to salvage his career, you try to do that. So I understand that perspective, and that's exactly why they did it. What I'm surprised by is Cade York left here in a huff because he was mad that he got cut. They wanted to bring him back on the practice squad last year, and he said no, and he chose Tennessee. Um, I'm a little surprised that his ego allowed him to come back. Wow. Time heals all wounds, right? I mean, got to got to get a job. Right. So and I don't I, know. I mean, yeah. And I think I, I think he looks at it like, hey, these guys really had faith in me when they drafted me. Um, and maybe this is the best place for me. Yeah. And your point, what you said is exactly what I was thinking. So, yeah, spot on as far as the Browns yeah. wanting to bring him back. So, uh, what's going on, uh, Nick Chubb, Watson-wise? Yeah, we'll start with Watson. He started to throw last week um, out in L.A. You know, he's doing the rehab, and that's a milestone. I'm sure he's not throwing it 100%, obviously, right? Um, we're, he's just over four months after the surgery. 
I haven't seen any social media of him zipping it around, which probably means it's still in the early stages, or it does mean it's in, in the early stages. But the Browns remain confident that he's going to be able to participate in not only the offseason program, but the OTAs and throw the ball. And they sent their head athletic trainer, Joe Sheehan, out there to watch him throw. So, you know, the, the reports continue to be optimistic. Now, you know, we're probably looking at mid to end of May when we'll get to see a practice. And that's when I'll get to see how it looks coming, how the ball looks coming out of his hand. Um, you know, and that's not going to be the end all be all because even then there's, you know, another three and a half months to the season. But it's so important, right? He's, I mean, it's, I mean this is self explanatory. Quarterback needs to throw an unusual surgery, major surgery. Um, it's all going to be about where Deshaun Watson's arm and throwing ability and comfortability and lack of pain, where that is as we progress through the offseason and into week one. All right. Uh... Oh, Chubb. Did you, yeah, did Chubb. You, yeah, yeah, Chubb. I, I, <laughs> yeah, he's working out. He's in the facility every day. Stefanski, Kevin Stefanski says he sees him every day. Um, you know, we all know he's rehabbing incredibly hard and working hard. That's just who Nick Chubb is. Andrew Barry, the GM, said, we don't know right now. We can't predict right now when Nick Chubb will be able to return. And if that is there's a chance for that to be week one or not, because he's not doing football stuff, right? Yes, he's running some. But it's not the same intensity. It's not agility drills. And he, Barry said, by the draft, which is a month from now, he thinks he'll have a better idea. Um, but really, it'll play out over the next two to three months. So, you know, right around the end of minicamp, and, try to, you know, he's not going to participate in the minicamps, but right around the end of minicamp is when the Browns should have a good idea if there's a chance that Chubb can return week one or how he'll look. Um, so we're still a ways away from from knowing just how much he'll be able to contribute and when. Scott, I, I guess I forgot or didn't know. I know that we we talk fantasy football all the time. I didn't realize you were in a uh, fantasy baseball league. I yeah, it's been a while. It's it's my uncle's NASA league. Shout out to anybody who listens to this. Um, and I'm partners with one of my other uncles. And I got to be honest, Chud, like I do about an hour worth of research and let the other uncle run the the team because there's just too much <laughs> it's daily yeah. moves you got to set the, when he yeah. goes on vacation and leaves me in charge it's so stressful so i just throw my money and hope to collect and then there's usually a poker game after the draft so i like that part of it <laughs> how'd that go i won the first game you won the poker game I did. <laughs> nice nicely done wow, i love <laughs> poker man <laughs> yeah um yeah i did fantasy baseball forever i mean pretty much from when i when it started becoming popular. And so just a couple of years ago, I just, it just, I had to give something up. Something yeah. had to give time wise. It's, it, it's so time consuming. It really is. I mean, not only, I mean, right. The, the, the research would be one thing, right? If the preparation, you could do that. You could study for however many days, look through all the stuff you need to look through, but it's the daily lineup, setting your lineup and make sure this guy's playing and not hurt and no yep. rain outs. And it's, it's really, it is a grind. Yeah, it affects my knowledge though, because I oh, yeah. one thing about fantasy it keeps you into it more. You, no you know, doubt about besides that. Besides just the, besides just the Guardians, but uh, yep. hey, uh, we're taping this on Thursday. Guardians open their season tonight, uh, and then uh, so we're going to take next week off, right? And yep. then we'll bounce back. We'll catch up the week after, and by that point, Scott, we'll have a solar eclipse and a Guardians home opener. How about that? Yeah, and then we can turn our attention to the draft. But that solar yeah, eclipse. I'm looking forward to that solar eclipse. Are you? I I, I, keep, I, like, I don't know anything about it. I don't know anything about anything. But I was talking to a guy the other day who said if the if the forecast is for cloudy here, I mean, he lives there. If the forecast is for cloudy, he's going to drive somewhere where it's not going to be cloudy because he's seen the eclipse before, and he says it's the best thing he's ever seen. Yeah, see, I, we did a story on that on Go, uh, and – Austin Love did a story with this guy, and he said it, like, changed his life. It's like a life-changing experience. Yeah. So, <laughs> I mean, so it must know, be worth it. Yeah, I guess. I mean, I mean, I, my, my kids were testing out their glasses the other day. So, you know, got to gotta be prepared for it. Yep. But uh, cheap plug, we're actually – so, Scott, that will be that morning. Uh, 
I'll be on in the, in the AM, you know, for our regular yeah. morning show. Then we get, we'll come back in the afternoon on Channel 3. We're doing a uh, a special from 2 to 4. Now, ready for the name of this? Uh-huh. Because, because the Guardians game is on Channel 3. Right. All right. So we're going to do it's a, a combination of the solar eclipse happening at that time along with pregame. Total eclipse of the park. Yeah, that's pretty clever. <laughs> well, shout out to is that Bonnie Tyler? A little total eclipse of the heart? <laughs> yeah, there you go. That's exactly it. Yeah. So nice. um yeah, that's gonna be a wild day. No question. So uh a lot's gonna happen here uh before we talk again. So good that we got this in here this week and um uh had a feeling there'd be some stadium buzz and yeah. indeed there was. So uh and then we'll be able to talk about that Brazil situation probably next time we talk. And yeah. uh, like you said, talk talk draft. I mean, uh, boy, we're uh, we're getting close to that now, right? Yeah, That's un- under un- un- under a month. Yeah, under a month. I think it's I think it's April twenty fifth. It starts. Um, obviously, the Browns don't have a pick that first day. Um, yeah, it's twenty fifth, six and seven. So yeah, so less than a month. Um, yeah, I get to work on my pre draft plan, all of that. So yeah, they don't. You know how it goes. There's always something going on, but that'll be the next. That feels like the next big milestone for us. So, yeah, no doubt. Hey, wh- where is it at again? I forget. Detroit. Detroit. That's right. Yeah. Okay. Yeah. Man, Detroit. Man, after what the Lions did yeah. last year, and then hey, and, you know, give the NFL credit. I don't know if we ever followed this up, but remember we talked about last year when the schedule came out. Give, give the uh, oh. NFL credit. They they put the Lions in that Thursday night game against the Chiefs to showcase them. And they ended up going to the NFC Championship game. Yeah, no, that's a good point. That's a real good point. I wonder who's going to get. I haven't, I haven't paid it or dug deep enough, but obviously the Chiefs are hosting again. Um, mm-hmm. You know, I wonder who. I wonder who they're going to get week one. Yeah, you know? so I I remember retweeting this, um, and I had it in my mind down to two teams, and uh, gosh, I can't. One of them I thought could be the Chargers, Harbaugh. Oh, uh, yeah. Show- showcase Harbaugh and you know you could talk up that storyline and um oh man the other one I think oh there was three I think the Ravens okay you could do, you could do the AFC championship rematch yep and this is one I have high up there is is the Bengals and Burrow because oh, they're the geez. team they, they, they struggle with right yeah those are so, all being really I good think- yeah, I think the Ravens are on their schedule. I know for sure, obviously, the Chargers are, and I know the, the uh, Bengals are. But I, yeah, those are play, my three. Yeah, they play the Ravens for sure. Um, yeah. Because of Kansas City State, they play the division. Yeah. Yeah, okay. So that's my – that's – those are my top three, and I, 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 could, I could see a case for all three of those. I'd be surprised if it's not one of those three, but um, – I don't know. We'll see. Like you, yeah. like you always say, we've been wrong before, and we'll be wrong again. <laughs> no, but those <laughs> those are really good picks. the The Chargers game kind of feels like the easiest of those for the Chiefs, um, but there's a ton there: Herbert and Harbaugh, and yeah, division division game. Yeah, that'll be interesting. I, I'd like to see. I I, I just always the, the Burrow versus the Chiefs is yeah. always outstanding television and drama. I think. Sure, um, he's coming back from the injury, all of it, yeah. Yeah, so it'll be good. Um, but anyway, uh, all right, well, uh, we'll talk again soon, and uh, good to catch up here again this week. Yep, I appreciate it, as always, Chug, fitting this in. I know you got a lot of stuff going on. Thanks, everybody, for listening. This has been another episode of the Zone Coverage Podcast, and you could read all my work at brownzone.com. Thanks.